Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Raise the Vibe with Liz. I'm your host, Liz Peterson, and today we're going to be talking all about health and wellness in the restaurant industry with Deborah Friend Wilson. Let me tell you a little bit about Deborah really quick. So after more than two decades in marketing and communications for global consumer and technology brands, Deborah Friend Wilson transitioned her passion for public facing communications into a career of mental health and wellness education and advocacy. She studied at the University of Paris and holds a BA in psychology with an emphasis on organizational behavior. An entrepreneur and innovator at heart, she co-founded and operated a successful public relations and marketing agency in Seattle for clients ranging from startups to Fortune 500 companies and subsequently served as a communications consultant and freelance writer in the San Francisco Bay Area. In 2016, she transitioned from a public-facing corporate career to one focused on social science and mental health advocacy. Spurred on by COVID-19 global pandemic and its ongoing trauma impact on social and interpersonal dynamics, she founded a management consulting practice to address the transformative effects of COVID-19 on workers in the hospitality industry. She is a strong advocate for the reduction of mental health stigma in the restaurant industry and believes that workers are in desperate need for mental health services and wellness support. She has been able to apply the most current research in mental health and social science theory to her work with individuals and hospitality organizations in a COVID-19 world. Deborah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to be here. I think this is a great topic. I personally was in the restaurant business from the age of 15 through 27, 28 years old. And then again, right before the pandemic, I spent another six years in the restaurant business when I moved um, out of being a full-time parent and wanted to pick up some income again. So three days a week at a local restaurant here on Vashon, which I just love and adored, but you know, haven't done it since 2020. So here's a COVID-19 world everything shuts down yes yes it's it's uh it's so you know it's fun to hear you already referencing your experience working in restaurants um the data is significant we have one in two people in the united states has says that their first job is in a restaurant so when we really look at this is half of our working population that starts their whole mindset about career and work ethic in the restaurant industry, which is really plagued, and most of us can agree, it's been plagued by issues of mental health and wellness um, for since it's, since inception, really. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, a, it's an urgent need and it's a wonderful opportunity for us to correct systems and send out the, a workforce in a really different way that can have a dramatic impact on our economy, quite honestly. Right. So what was it that sparked inside you that led to this consulting career? So I, as, as you went through my background, I, I work very much in the corporate world. I came out of college with an interest and a degree in psychology, particularly on leadership and organizational behavior and had the opportunity to manage teams of people um, and and apply that sort of social science theory to to the workforce um, and and rode that wave all through, um, you know, the revitalization of Seattle and um, coming into the dot com era and applying the same kind of organizational theory to working. I retired from that career and raised my family um, and really transitioned to focus more my work in just mental health and advocacy. So I went back to graduate school at Seattle University for a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. And right when I started that, COVID hit. And I found myself in a place where I was learning counseling theory in a pandemic on Zoom um, going through in real time what what the impact was of mental health um, in a COVID-19 world. And I think we can all agree to a large extent, the entire paradigm shifted from, you know, what is work? Why do people work? How do people work? What does work mean for people? Um, and we experienced this, I would call it an annihilation of the restaurant industry. 
Um, it's relevant to say I also got married to a chef. My husband, Jason, is a James Beard Award winning chef, has been in the business for years and years and years. Um, so I sort of inherited these restaurants and got to know the restaurant world from a mental health perspective and watched it almost become extinct. You know, nobody was going out to eat. Obviously, restaurants were closing all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, and we saw this great resignation happening. You know, by the time we opened up again through the pandemic, we had, you know, three quarters of the workforce decided, hey, I never want to go back to restaurants again because I value my work life balance and my mental health. You know, we all had this like look in the mirror for the couple of years of lockdown and said, I don't want to step back into that system. It was broken before and it's broken in a new way now. So mm. it, it's interesting this this moment in time when you realize, wow, I I have all of these things have lined up. You know, so I'm studying here to be a counselor. My personal life is in restaurants and I'm thinking this is a no brainer. I have an opportunity to point out something that has been harmful to so many people. And I have a unique ability to apply the best of mental health theory to to the sort of the best of having an insight into what restaurants are right now. So I just dove in. I just. At this stage of my life, I just took a risk and said, hey, this is going to be meaningful work. I'm uniquely poised to do something in an industry I care about. And so I had to take some risks and, and away I went. That's great, Deborah. Thank you for your contribution. I think it's really important because there's a lot that goes on within the restaurant system that a lot of people are unaware of, right? People, we're hunter-gatherers, we're searching out our restaurant, we're just seeking our table, we want to get fed, we get nourished, we're satisfied, and then we go. And there's this whole realm that's going out. I personally, since you know, being sent home at the end of March 2020, and personally not looking to go back, you know, a lot of people that I know on the island, as you said, really reflected on their work-life balance, perspective spending time with their family, their priorities got reorganized, you know, so what does that look like for the restaurant business and what you're seeing with, within your consultation business? Right, so if we look at restaurants and we look at hospitality in general, what is service? Um, the theory in mental health that applies most to restaurants is family systems theory. Um, if you look at a restaurant as a house and people come into our house to enjoy our food and to have our hospitality, and you, you, you think about when you were a kid, you go to someone's house, you walk in and you can feel the vibe. You can feel how people are feeling. You can taste in people's food. Is it made with love? You know, we say we cook from the heart. Is it made with love? When we have an industry in, in most restaurants are run in this fast paced, very, very stressful, um, urgency, um, you, you know, mindset, and they're putting out the food in a certain period of time for, for a guest that expects a certain experience. And at the very end of it, essentially with Yelp reviews and so on, we get this scorecard, right? Like, oh, that was good, that was bad, five-star review, whatever that is. And um, it's, it's sort of like the theory, you know, people say, you can take like good food comes from good ingredients, right? Like a your spaghetti and meatballs or whatever it is that you're eating, you can taste the fresh herbs and you can taste the certain kinds of wine and whatever. I think that we now need to ask the restaurant industry to look at it. Does good food really come from good ingredients or first, does it come from healthy people? You know, healthy people who are mindful, who are at peace, who are in harmony, you literally are cooking and serving people pieces of your heart. And I think before you even put those foods together and put them on a plate, it comes from what is the psychic and spiritual mindset of the folks who are actually creating that experience. Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we are what we, we are what we eat we and are what we are experience. Food. Yeah. Yeah. Like so who's cooking our food? It's the ultimate yeah, sensory experience. You know, yeah. we can have a gourmet meal in any 
any number of different environments and dining out is an experience. It's not just the ingestion of ingredients, it's a whole experience. And, you know, restaurants have spent so much time, wonderfully so, designing their spaces and having their themes and having the menus look just so and all this stuff. But you can, I think we all agree, you can feel when you're in the midst of somebody who is at peace and who is calm. You just feel it intangibly and it affects the experience. Yes. And, yeah. and when you are around somebody who is scared, stressed out, maybe detached, maybe um, you know, in a fear-based mindset, it completely transforms the dining experience. And, and I think restaurants have faked it. I think that there's a stuffiness and an air of like white glove service and whatever, but it's like there is a heart and a piece that's been missing from the dining experience that, that really impacts it. And I think restaurants have an opportunity to invest in mental health services and wellness services to support emotionally safe work environments that will have a direct impact on their bottom line success. Cool. I like this. So how does the restaurant industry create an environment that transfers into our experiences in the restaurant? That's a great question. I, and I, I love, I could talk about this for hours. So I'm going to try to be as concise as possible. So um, I piloted our first wellness program at our restaurant um, that my husband and I own. It's called the Lake House in Bellevue. And um, the first thing that we did was we, we took one of our storage rooms, which is downstairs, um, and I turned it into a wellness room. So we created a space within the restaurant that is just for our workers. And a lot of restaurants have like, oh, if you go on your break, you gotta go around the back or you can't be inside of the guest or you have to you know, stand in this one area to take your 15 minute break or whatever that is. We basically, my theory was to treat our workers with the same hospitality that we treat our guests. So when our folks first come to work, they can put their things down in a well-appointed, it's sort of like a little mini spa. It's a little oasis and a retreat where they, there's amenities to like get themselves dressed in private areas. There's um, really healthy snacks that we keep stocked. There's waters, there's all kinds of other uh, services for them. We hold um, meditations down there. We do like guided meditations as a group downstairs. The lights are dim and everybody can just sort of settle in. We have a lot of mental health books and resources there for people. We did a whole like book club around Atlas of the Heart, Brene Brown's new book. So people are starting to speak a, cer a certain language and we all sort of unite in this physical space in a place of wellness. So that was the first thing is we found a, we found a place there's an old adage and that's sort of like, go have a breakdown in the freezer. People would, you know, there's a whole thing about like, if you're stressed out, people would go into the big walk-in cooler and cry back there. Yeah. And, yeah. and I really confront that and say, no, no, no. You know, we don't need to go stand in cold storage to have a breakdown. If you're feeling a certain way and need some space to process emotions, we have a wellness room now for people. So. That was the first thing that we did is, is literally create the physical environment. Um, and then the second thing we did was a program to boost the emotional literacy of our teams. So we're literally teaching people a language of feelings so that people can and truly just learn how to communicate more in a grounded, centered approach. So we did that by um, installing these colored mood boards so we have four colors up on the wall in the common area in our case we put it right on the line in the hot bed of the restaurant at expo so there's a spot in every restaurant where the food comes out and the server picks it up and everyone's in there and it's it's a really it's a stressful environment um so we have a mood board up there and every day when people clock into work, they put a pin in that mood board that says where they are emotionally at that moment. So green is in this family of like, I'm chill, I'm calm. Yellow is in the family of I'm energy, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm up. Red is in the category of I'm tired I'm, or, or I'm, I'm angry, I'm irritable, I'm on edge. 
And blue is in the category of I'm tired, I'm down, I'm a little depressed maybe, I'm contemplative. So what happens is we get onto shift and people have put pins in the board and what they've done there is stopped and said, what am I bringing into this space emotionally? Okay, I'm a little tired, I'm really excited, I'm kind of nervous, it's my first day, whatever it is, they put the pin in. And then also after everybody's put their pin in, you can walk into the kitchen and look at the board and say, all right, here's where my team is at. We have, you know, where a lot of us are green, we're a pretty chill group today. Some of us are red, we're kind of angry. Or maybe it's a really blue board today because we because it's Sunday morning and Saturday shift was really high. So without even saying anything, you can walk into that line and say, okay, I'm, I'm in touch now with how we're all feeling. So if somebody is snappy or short or detached, we can look at the board and go, all right, that makes sense because I can tell that someone's walked in already owning what those feelings are. Um, and as I say, boosting the emotional literacy, it gives us a language. So we have people saying, hey, what's your color? Instead of saying, how are you? You know, what's your color? Oh, my color's blue. I put blue in, blue in there because I'm tired or yellow in there because I'm really excited because somebody just came into town and I get to do this after work or whatever it is. And all of a sudden there is this elevated conversation that is very connected that says where people are. And that alone has done mountains to up the game of mindfulness and emotional literacy in the kitchen. It says, I'm accountable. For, I have done my work and figured out where I am. I'm accountable to show up and show you authentically where I am today. And I'm going to participate in this community experience of navigating our feelings while we're executing service today. Um, and that's a really powerful answer or alternative rather to, oh my God, get it done, just get it out, just quickly, quickly, you know, yeah. why is so-and-so yeah. doing stuff? So it's, it's really, it's been interesting. That in itself is amazing. Let me just say that's amazing. Being in the restaurant industry, <laughs> that is amazing because I look back, my friends look back, you know, when I go home and we talk about our experiences in the restaurant world where we were yelled at, we didn't have a place to put our stuff. You know, yes. it was judgment and reaction and attack. Right. You know, that's exactly what it is. And these are things that take a little bit of time. You know, wellness and mental health is not the kind of thing that you just pay for it. And then, oh, you're a happy person, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's we are literally transforming the culture of work at restaurants. It, it unites and bonds people in a place of emotional authenticity and connection, and frankly, a lot of vulnerability. Yeah. Um, it, it has made, I, I can, it's very difficult to put into words how impactful it is to see a team uniting in a sense of like, wow, let's be utterly human and real in this moment. Let's support each other. Um, there is, you said judgment, shaming. There is none of that when we have this, because if you're speaking a level of emotional literacy, there is no room for judgment. We are not the emotions police of each mm -hmm. other. We are the, it's our, sort of like we are this energy, this like free flowing kind of emotional amoeba, if you will. As, as we execute service, which is very much like a show, as you know, it's like, it's like putting on a performance. Um, it's, it's been pretty amazing. That is amazing to, and I love this work in the world. I love how emotional literacy, emotional awareness is really growing, you know, in our society right now, they're teaching it in schools now. I am super excited that you're now bringing into the restaurant industry. I think that's fantastic because a lot of times we can get tripped up on our emotions and not have the language, right? So if we're teaching that language of communication, that's half the battle right there is having right. the skills and the tools to be able to communicate in a healthy way with each other. That's exactly it. It is 
it is a it's a language of the heart it's a different kind of way of showing up and it requires willingness and courage to really show up and and show who you are it's very cool because it's contagious so once one person shows up in that way it spurs on this climate and people kind of catch on to this and find this amazing commonality in just being a human being and you know you said it's really easy in terms of emotional literacy for people to be like, oh, how are you today? Oh, I'm just so tired. I don't know. I'm kind of down or whatever. Um, to say pe to, to really be more clear in that and say, am I disappointed? Am I discouraged? Am I embarrassed? You know, like, am I envious? Like, when you have better words, you have better connection. Mm hmm yeah. yeah, a better way to share. Exactly. You know, exactly. and you can be honest and vulnerable. With them. Look, this is the space that I'm in right now. Or if you're in management and you're looking at employee ship, okay, I'm seeing this. Is there, you know, would you like to take a break? Maybe we can discuss what's going on, you know, and each person has language. This is how I'm feeling right now. Or I'm feeling exactly. like this needs to happen. Exactly. Or, yeah. We also teach folks um, a lot of, there's sort of different scripts that we teach people to communicate more in, in healthy ways. So restaurants are full of, let's call it conflict. So yes. conflict resolution and like advocating for oneself in a time of conflict is a big deal. So we teach um, an assertion script, for instance. So when, you, when we have something that we wanna communicate, people know to say, I feel blank when you blank, I would prefer that you blank, right? So instead of someone saying like, don't, you know, stop or do your own work. How come you're never cleaning up around here? You're never refilling the ketchup, right? Instead, it's the conversations are, I feel unsupported when you don't fill up the ketchups like, like is on your job description. Um, I would prefer that when you get in, you have 20 of them filled up so that I can do my job better. And then the person can respond and it's like a negotiation and away you go. There's short little changes to communication that make mountains of, um, you know, improvement in the way people are together. Um, it, also, there's in a way that we do there's always an apology or an amends. There's always like, gosh, I'm so, you know, sorry I was such a jerk that day or whatever that is. I'm sorry you feel that way or whatever. We teach people a more of an amends script that says, I recognize that I harmed you by doing one, two, and three. Is there anything I missed? And then the person can say, yes, you also did A, B, and C. And then you can say, okay, yeah, maybe I didn't. Then the next thing is, what can I do to make it right? So in the case of the ketchup, the, per the person could say, hey, I realized that I, I, I made it harder for you to do your job because I didn't have the ketchups filled up. Is there anything else I, I missed there? And the person could say, yeah, you know, you also didn't do the mustards and that also made it hard. And so they can say, oh yeah, you're right. I didn't do the mustards too. Hey, is there anything I can do to make this right? Yeah, you know, thanks so much for talking about it. And you can just fill up both the ketchup and mustards and we're all good. Okay, I agree to that. Great, thanks, have a great day. You know, and so if you think about those, it's a little clunky how I just spelled it out, but these are fast little interactions mm -hmm. that with practice, the entire team is just communicating so much more lovingly, frankly, and seamlessly. Um, and it invites some, it, it invites joy back into the workplace it invites joy back in. I think most people would say, hey, do you love working in restaurants? Oh, I make a lot of money, but God, it's really hard. You know, very few people are like, yeah, I'm just joyful and inspired all the time when I go to work as a server, you know? That's not usually what they say, but when we can get over this language barrier of emotions, it, it has really powerful impacts. And this is something that can ripple out to other restaurants. It ripples out into the employees' families. 
changes right. the dynamic of the restaurant itself, makes it a more enjoyable environment that again, translates you know, to the customer, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So here we found that this is a program that is a relatively low investment and simple fix that has, it exponentially raises the bar of how restaurants behave as an industry. So we have, so like the Lake House, for instance, is a wellness restaurant and we have a notification on the door that says that. So what that means is somebody who comes and works for us, you know, they learn these practices, right? And when they go to a different restaurant, they now have an asset of leadership and communication tools that they bring to the next restaurant they go to or the next workplace or their families or their friend circle or wherever they are. It is an asset that people now have by working in one restaurant and it is prolific in the way it impacts everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I've told people like as a parent, do I want my daughter's first job in a restaurant to be, you know, running with the wolves, so to speak, yeah. or a restaurant that says, hey, we care about the mental health and wellness of each one of our workers. I would feel safer having my child work at a restaurant like that. Um, if a small community, like you live on Vashon, I live on a small in a small community. If there were five restaurants that had this, the communities themselves would start upping the ante with how restaurants are. So I envision communities truly get stronger by raising the bar in this regard. And that is very powerful. Um, it changes, it changes the landscape. The other thing that it does as people, we all go out to eat, right? Mm -hmm. The guests start to behave differently. So when, when you know that you're eating at a restaurant that has, let's call it standards for wellness and interaction, it holds the guests more accountable for their behavior. You know, this is not a space where we have racially charged interactions or, you know, other outbursts or entitlement or, you know, poor verbal abuse, let's call it, that I think we can all agree happens in restaurants. There is an accountability now from, you know, back of house to front of house to guest. It's like we it, it's sort of like saying you go to someone's house, you know, it's like not in our house. You know, this is a place where we don't do that. And that has been very exciting to see as well. The guest behavior has changed because we've changed in how we relate to each other and to them. That's huge. And even if it does walk through the door now, you know, your servers have skills to be able to handle something like that. Or if they need to pass it on to a manager, the manager has emotional health to be able right. to handle the situation. You yeah. Know, in a calm and constructive way. Yeah. You know, you get into that team mentality. So the other, um, the first part of the, the wellness room and the check-in or the, the emotional color board is sort of the first phase of a wellness program. Once we have that running for about a month or so, the next phase of it is what I think is the most exciting, which is we call it our check-in program. Mm -hmm. The check-in program is a peer support program mm -hmm. where we create um, trained servers and workers in the industry, in, in the restaurant itself, to support one another in a peer support framework. So at the Lake House, we have we have like seven or 10 check-in team members. We have a staff of 50 people. So a few of those people have been identified or, or frankly opted in to be check-in peer members. Um, and they go through, we did a four hour basic mental health and counseling skills workshop with them so that they learned listening techniques. They learned baseline information about identifying like substance use issues or mental other mental health issues but mostly it's communication tools like how do we actually do active listening how do we do paraphrasing um, all of those things that a counselor would learn and they wear a little check mark pin it's a very small little badge on their their clothes whatever if 
if they want to, they don't have to, but they, they tend to do it. Um, and they are identified. So what happens is as things go on in the restaurant, like in the scenario you said, if there's a guest that has an issue, people in our restaurant know to go to each other who are trained mental health people now, peer support people to receive whatever that scenario is. So we are teaching restaurants to take care of themselves. Um, and that's a big deal. That's a, that's, so it's not really my program. It's a training program to give people and give them practice and give them supervision and all of this to, to behave differently. So the accountability is on the restaurant. Yeah. The more they participate, the healthier they are. And interestingly, we've had neighboring restaurant staff from neighboring restaurants come over and ask us, Hey, how should I handle this scenario that happened in my place or whatever? So it's like, it catches on really quickly. Like I've never spoken to anybody who's worked in a restaurant who hasn't said, wow, I really wish we had that in my restaurant. Yeah. You know, I really wish I had a place to say, oh my gosh, I just got chewed out by a guest. I need to just take a moment. I need to go down and sit on the couch and put a little blanket on and have an orange juice and just talk to someone who can like receive my feelings for a second and go back out there and finish my job. Wow. <laughs> transformative. It's transformative. It's transformative. I, yeah. And, and it is really rewarding work. Um, and it's different, you know, wonderfully. So there has been a lot of advocacy around this issue. There are some movies, like there's a movie that just came out. It's called boiling point. Um, it's a, it's just a day in the life of a restaurant that just talks about how difficult it can be. There's Anthony Bourdain and, you know, we've seen all of the, there's some sort of, there's news, like people, it's dramatic and Gordon Ramsay, you know, it makes good TV to watch the craziness. It's been, we could call it glorified or glamorized, yeah. but this is yeah. how it is. Um, so it's, yeah, to do this kind of work. It's different than like some restaurants will give a sexual harassment training, right? Or even a mental health training. They will have people sit in front of Zoom and take training and like prove that they've been in it. But this is a program that is on the street, person to person. It's very, it follows much more of a counseling track in developing a, a therapeutic alliance or a peer to peer trust um, that is starkly different than a band-aid one-off impersonal training and i even say like there are restaurants in different communities with different you know demographics different ages different products all kinds of different diversity you know considerations that a wellness program can be tailored to mm -hmm. so it's uh i also have the vision of like if we had many of these restaurants who are following the same structure they can cross pollinate to each other. So a restaurant in Seattle could parlay over to a restaurant in another state or somewhere else to, to have a true network of peer support, you know, company to company. Um, that, that, you know, it's, it's fun to think about the possibilities here. Yeah. It, it's amazing. truly the reform. It's like rehab for restaurants. It really <laughs> is. It's bringing emotionally mature, emotional maturity into the restaurant field. Precisely. It makes it safe. Yeah. And it's almost like this problem of mental health, you know, discrepancy in restaurants, it's going on right under our noses. You know, it's happening everywhere. And we, we are all accountable for it. If we go out to eat anywhere, we all like, this is everyone's problem. If you ever have gone to a restaurant, it is, it is your problem too. You know, where do you want to be consuming your food and your connection and your celebration moments? You know, let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's challenge each other to all raise the bar emotionally when we show up in this world. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. And to have those moments when the restaurant's nice and quiet and we're practicing these skills on each other, right? So then when chaos does ensue and everybody's in the weeds and it's the restaurant is slammed, if somebody gets triggered, then they have the awareness within themselves, you know, not to blurt something out, possibly to take a pause so they can respond, you know, and right. react. Yeah. You know, and, and that's such an interesting point that's bringing me to like, we don't fix things, right? People are going to be triggered. People are going to experience a lot of stress. That's how, that's how restaurants are. That's how a lot mm-hmm. of different industries are. Yeah. It's not so much about, okay, here, I'm going to fix your problem. It's about, Hey, you're upset. You know, boy, you're feeling really upset. Let's, let's breathe together for a second. Wow. Yes. That triggered you. That scared you. That was upsetting, you know, and People want to be seen and heard, right? People want to be able to turn to someone else and look them in the eyes and say, this is where I am right now. And have somebody receive that without saying, get back in there or leave it at the door or there's no crying. You know, Mm -hmm. we do not have the right to police each other emotionally while in our homes, in our relationships, and least of all at work. We spend a major, a lot of people spend a majority of their time at work. You know, let's bring emotional transparency to the workplace. Not expect people to take off one mask and put on another one. Sure, we want people to be professional and all that good stuff, Mm -hmm. but they can still be human. You can still be triggered and upset and be a professional. Yeah. And that's the key, right? When you're in a management position, you want to be professional. You don't want to be, you know, toxic, experiencing toxic behavior, you know, transferring that onto the employees, you know, with conflict, you know, to have those skills of nonviolent communication, to be accountable, you know, to have emotional maturity, you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the data is really, really compelling. I mean, so what we've seen, at least in our restaurant, the, the retention rate, so it's a very, the industry in general is known for people hop around, right? People leave and go to different restaurants a lot. That's common. There's no expectation that it would ever really change because it's sort of the nature of the work. Some people stay in one place for a long time, but people do tend to hop around. So the data around when one employee leaves, um, it costs on average $6,000 of productivity to the restaurant. So, you know, it stops that line. You have to find, you have to go recruit someone else. You have to train someone else. And then you, then the team has to figure out how to work with someone else. So when we have less people quitting, it's a massive cost savings to the to the restaurant in whole. Mm-hmm. In, in a yeah. whole. Um, we also have, I would say, a majority of the people who are looking for a job and come to the lake house at least. Most of them say, "I'm here because I heard about the wellness program." So it is a really easy way for restaurants to find. Everyone's like, "I need to find good people." There are no workers, right? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, it's because we're showing up in this volatile workplace. If the workplace says, hey, I'm a safe place to be, people want to come. I would dare say it's not that there aren't workers out there anymore. It's that the workers, wonderfully so, have different standards about where they want to work. And it's on the employer to say, I see that. I take responsibility and I'm investing in that. You know, if if you're going to spend more money to buy organic ingredients, you know, people come in to pay, people will pay more money to eat food that is sustainably harvested, that is organic or whatever. We have found people also will pay money, more money to eat in a place that is sustainable from a human perspective. It's not a factory pumping out workers. It's a place that says, yeah, we care about everybody here. And, you know, most of all, our staff care about the guests for a couple hours while you're here, but we care about this family in, in our restaurant. It's a big statement and it, and it has a lot of, a lot of impact. 
I'm sure it does because, you know, being in the industry, the high turnover came from the complaints about the other workers, the lack of communication, the increased conflict, not being able to communicate, not being heard. So to have that in place, I'm sure people are seeking out that healthy work environment. Yeah. People want something different. They want their environments to change. They want to feel safe in an environment, you know, cared for, nurtured, accepted, you know, and not stressed. People don't want to in their life. That's right. And, you know, other industries have been behaving, you know, have been investing in these resources and have have these expectations, you know, lots of folks in the tech sector, you see all of these like internet startups and they have all these bells and whistles and all these things. This is not new, but I think there's a little bit of privilege, maybe a lot of privilege in certain sectors that have been able to give these resources and show this kind of value to their workers and restaurants have not had the opportunity to do that. So this is a very, um, equitable and accessible service that I firmly believe is the change is happening. The, the train has left the station. It's really a matter of how quickly are people going to jump on the train? I, I think, you know, in 10 years, <clears throat> I think it will hopefully be harder to find a restaurant that stands for these poor leadership practices. You know, I just I think this is a, it's an exciting time to be part of a wave where, you know, just when I was a little girl, I was like, one day they won't have bears in a cage at the circus, you know, and and sure enough, it's like, yeah, that's pretty, pretty hard pressed to see that kind of animal abuse, at least in my neighborhood. Um, I feel like restaurant poor behavior in restaurants is going to be less and less tolerable. And I really think it's a call to the industry leaders to say, it's my responsibility to up our industry by investing in this. Um, Yeah, I think it's it's a sound, responsible, innovative business move for everybody to be doing this. And it's, I'm seeing some people are doing this in the way of like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a training. Everyone's gonna have a training, or I'm gonna extend this benefit like. I'm going to give my staff access to a counselor on a platform somewhere else. You can have two hours of counseling or whatever. I don't think that that's that's the issue. I think that the the wellness transformation happens inside the restaurant, boots on the ground, in consistent daily practice, and it takes time not not a lot of time, but like we see, like three or four months or so mm-hmm. will completely transform the culture. Definitely. I can see where that would be the case. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, it's easy to, you know, have this little training online that you sit and you do, but then, you know, you're not taking anything into the workplace where you're putting it into practice. right? Right. And it's really in practice. And if everybody's on the same page is where the transformation really happens. Right. Exactly. And I think it's, It's also about willingness. Like, I think this is a real call. This is me calling out to managers and leaders in restaurants to say like, this works if people buy into it. You know, if people are willing to show up and invest and show up consistently to make this change. Like when you have a family, say there's couples maybe going through a divorce or changes in the family, you don't just go to a therapist or read an Instagram meme or take a class and have your family all put back together again right? It's about the daily choice to show up consistently in a place of action. It is inherently weird and messy and uncomfortable and kind of scary at first, just like anything is. But the, you know, the payoff is enormous. And wow, you know, you can send home your workers at the end of shift where they're not wanting to go get drunk at the bar where they're not wanting to verbally abuse their families, um, you know, or just keep perseverating this problem. We have staff at the, at the lake house who go down and they hang out in the wellness room and drink sparkling water and tell jokes and write on the board instead of going to the bar and getting wasted. That's a That's huge awesome. 
deal. You know, rates of substance use, let's face it, they are enormous in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. You could even call it, you know, it's, this is a deadly problem. It's a culture to have a stressful night at work and go out with the crew and have a drink. Right. Right. And one of our, we also do training workshops. So once a month or so we do trainings. One of them was on stress and burnout. You know, how do you, how do you come down after, after a big night like that? It's totally normal that you just need to blow off steam before you do anything. But what, what we really found actually is that that swell of energy, when we take care of people's emotional health before service, it makes it less urgent to come down and escape after service because people have tools to manage the rhythm of the daily emotional life, you know, emotional lives at work and they don't need to crash. They just don't need to crash as hard. Sure. They're human. And you know, there's all kinds of issues always, mm -hmm. but as a whole, they are learning a new lifestyle at work. Yeah, and if you're going through your day and you're not reaching those emotional peaks, there's no need right. to even try to self-medicate, you know, after yeah. work from all the stress because the stress never happens. Everybody right. has the skills to be able to handle everything. So you're walking out of the door in a different mind space and a different physical space. That's right. That's right. And we have this conversation that started like early on in service. You know, you know from restaurants, maybe there's we have this lineup. So before service, we all stand around and talk about, you know, what's what's on the fresh sheet today and what's going on today. And we have a party here and a party there. We end lineup every day with a wellness connection. So we usually people we do the three word check in. So we go around the circle and say, what are three words? How are you showing up right now? So like authentically here in this space with you, if I was doing it, how am I feeling right now? I'm feeling energized, a little anxious, you know, um, and curious. So, and, and so literally people say their three words. So we all look at each other and go, wow, okay, that's where you are today. We've had all kinds of people say all kinds of things. And after that, we do a four minute like breathing meditation exercise. So our lineup consists of people closing their eyes and stretching and rocking back and forth and inhaling and exhaling together. And then we blink our eyes open and we look at each other in the eye and say, have a good service. You know, that's a dramatically different way to start service than a lot of restaurants do. And it, yeah. and it's noticeable. Yeah. To start off in the parasympathetic nervous system and set yes. of stressed out. Oh my gosh, these are the special, right. this is this, and this is that, and I have to do good. And is everything done? And to be able to take that pause and connect right. with the crew and then sink down, everybody gets grounded yes. and stable. Yes. That's huge. And if, and you know, if you do that every single day, then over time, what are we doing? We're building up a muscle memory for centering. Mm -hmm. So when people have that moment of like, oh my God, I'm being triggered. I need to take a second. They can much more quickly reach to that grounded place because everyone's already in the habit of doing it. We have literally strengthened that muscle of meditation that I'm, I know, you know, like that's a, it's a note. It's an important practice. People can return to a place of centered much faster because they literally are in the daily practice of it. And they have this common language. They can say, "Why? Well, I remember when you checked in, you said you were, you know, angry, hopeless, and whatever. And like, all right, let's, you know, look me in the eye. Let's breathe for a second. Those types of interactions happen a lot. And that's, that's awesome. yeah, it's transformative. That's exciting. Okay. For all of those restaurant owners out there or people in the restaurant industry that are like, yes, you know, this is so exciting. I totally want to bring this to my restaurant. How do they do that? What's the process in implementing, implementing these things in their work environment? So it, it's simply contact me. So I am, you know, Deborah friend, Wilson consulting.com is my website. Um, you can learn more about what I'm doing and contact me through there. Also, I'm, I'm active on Instagram. So it's at DFW consulting is my Instagram handle. Um, and it's really through those things. I mean, it, it's not, 
everybody who comes and has an interest in this, we customize a program based on their population, the size of their restaurant, the location of it and whatever. Um, but that's the easiest way to reach me. Gosh, that's fantastic. And if they go to their, your website, you're going to find restaurant wellness, mental health and wellness programs, team building, organizational strategy, mindfulness program, peer counseling, substance abuse support, mental health resource connection, diversity training, and wellness rooms. Yes. Great. Is there anything that you would like to share with us that we haven't yet touched on? We do have a few more minutes left in the show if you'd like to, if anything. I think it's, um, my, what I really am doing here, what I am passionate about is advocating to innovate and elevate this entire industry. It is not a competitive thing. It is not a judgment or a shaming thing. I th I'm tired of shaming restaurants for poor practices. I'm tired of pointing the finger at chefs or servers or even guests who are behaving badly. That to me, that's entertainment and it's not solution driven. It's almost in the category of gossip. It's not a, it's no longer a time where we can judge people or an industry. It's a time when we're responsible to act differently. And it does not take long to learn a different way of communicating and challenging one another to elevate the standards of how we show up in this world. So I really, my biggest thing is be mindful about how we're showing up. And instead of being the, the police and judging everybody's behavior, do something about it. Ask yourselves, what can you do about it? And, and ask for help. There's people who are doing good work out here. That is so great. That is so great. And is there a jewel that you would like to leave us with today? A jewel. Yes, to sort of sum up who you are, what you do in the world, or a little tidbit that people can take away from today's conversation. I, one of the most important words that I walk around with is curiosity. I, my, if I could leave anybody with anything today, it would be stay curious about yourself, stay curious about those around you, ask why, and be in a mindset of growth and humility and teachability. When we notice something with curiosity, we are part of the solution. And that is the biggest piece of information I can pass on here. Stay curious. I love that, Deborah. Thank you so much. It has been Thank so you. great to have you. What a fantastic conversation. I think this is much needed. And there'd be a lot, a lot more happy employees in an environment like this. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me and, and bringing awareness to this. It's been a fun conversation. It has. Yeah, it's my pleasure to bring awareness to this. This is really important work. And uh, I can just see how it just ripples out into the community, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah. And once again, how can people reach you to have this conversation? Um, it's www.debrafriendwilsonconsulting.com. And that's D-E-B-O-R-A-H. Or you can find me on Instagram at DFW Consulting. Awesome. Thanks, Deborah. It was awesome Thank having you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the work that you're doing in the world. I think it's fantastic. And it's going to ripple out to multiple areas. Thank, Thank you so you. much. And thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Liz Peterson and this is Raise the Vibe with Liz. Thank you for joining me. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Raise the Vibe with Liz. And my website is Liz's Healing Touch.com. Have a great day, everybody. And remember to get out there and raise the vibe. Thanks, everyone.